Hi, gorgeous. Dad, I'm going to well. <laughs> Not right now. You want to say hi to the camera? The perks of working at home. The downsides to having a smaller shop and repairing trailers all the time is a third of the trailers outside. So, 28 foot long shop tells you how long the trailer is. I think the deck's 30 feet. So, so we've got the trailer in here. We've got our assistant in here. She's going to help me do some electrical work. So, the main reason that we've been working on the trailer is that occasionally the brakes lock up and the truck is wired correctly. Um, however, it seems like their brake controller does have some issues. But we've still got to replace the passenger side tail light and then we've got to replace four, I'm, I'm sorry, five of the amber marker lights along the sides. And then I do know that this rear passenger side wheel the wires for the brake are ripped out, and so I'm thinking maybe where those got ripped out, they might be shorting somehow to the tail lights, but I don't think so. But we're going to dig into that as well. Um, I have a gut feeling that we're probably going to replace most of the wiring into here because a lot of it's been ripped out, a lot of it's electrical taped, a lot of it's duct taped, um, and some of it's just tied in, in knots. There's a wire nut, there's broken wires, there's this missing ground, and it's just tied in a knot. Let's start on it. Right here, I've got the amber marker lights. And then right here, I've got the red markers. And so, we're gonna go along the side. Obviously, that one needs replaced. That one will be red, right there. And then, that one needs replaced. And then we'll, we'll just add, we'll throw some power on the circuit and we'll see if these two work, that one there and this one here. And then the other side I think is missing two amber lights. So this one's cracked. We'll need to see if it works. And then those two are both intact. So I'm not sure if they work or not. And then that red one's there, but it doesn't have any wiring to it. So we'll get the wiring fixed on that back one, see if it works. And then we'll uh, replace the three on this side and see if we can figure out the brake issue. So I have set up here a uh, test for the lights on the trailer. And this wire right here should be the brakes. So as you can see, as I click the brakes on, that light right there is also going on and off. So I definitely have a short from the brakes to the trailer lights. So I need to uh, trace the wires out and figure out where that's shorted. I have the tail lights wired on currently hooked up to that battery and the brake on one wheel only is locked. So what I'm gonna do is this right here is the wire from the plug and the junction box for the brake. I'm going to cut it right here and check that wheel. If it releases, that means the short is between here and the plug. If it stays connected, that means the short between the tail lights and the brake is between here and the wheels. So we're going to cut it right here. Nope, oh, and that just released. So our short is somewhere between right here and the junction box. Let's go spin that wheel to be sure. So we need to check for a short between right here and right there where you just saw me cut the wire and pull a whole new wire in and not even worry about chasing it. So here is the issue. The tail light at some point in time got so hot that it melted the entire length of this vertical runner and so it's melted right here, it's melted to the left blinker, right here it's melted to the ground, right here it's melted to the brake and the blinker and the ground and the right. You can see all that melt right there. So at some point in time, 
you got a lot of power to the tail light. And it's like got green corrosion all over it. So it wasn't actually the brake wire that was the issue, but it's ruined all of them. We're gonna replace from the junction box all the way down to right here, and we're gonna clean up the mess at this bottom corner as well. I'm getting ready to shove these wires in. I'm gonna tape them together so one doesn't get stuck. I just bought a generic four-way trailer wire set, and then I bought an additional larger gauge or heavier current wire for the brake. We're gonna push this through this runway here. Whenever I cut wires off, I leave a little bit of the old one there, and that's just how I remember what's what. So yellow is left turn, green is right turn, brown is tail light. In this case, black, a lot of times black is ground. This <clears throat> black is the trailer brake. Typically trailer brake would be blue. The store I went to did not have any blue, so I'm running red. Coincidentally, red is also the trailer brake color that was ran up this originally, and then this white over here is the ground. So, I'm going to trim a lot of these back so that they're the same length. Um, the only one I'm not going to trim back that far is this brown because it's got five wires spliced into one. And that's just uh, because they had tail lights going down the, to each backlight and then down each side for the markers. So, I'm going to trim the brown back to before that splice, or right in front of that splice, so it's still one single wire. All the rest of them, though, I'm going to cut to be the same length before I splice them. I'm going to start out by splitting off this new wire, each individual length. And typically, you can dig your fingernail in there and get them to split on the seam. So the black one, which is the brake, doesn't matter as much because it's going to this red, which is not tied to the other four. And so basically you want them all the same length so you don't have one sticking out past, like if you have your main core here of wires, you don't want one sticking out. Um, if it's longer, it won't ride all together. So being that all four of these are about the same length, well, not about, those are exactly the same length. I would prefer all of these be the same length. Like I said, this brown is not gonna be, so I'm actually gonna trim the new brown back a little bit further. But the rest of these, as I do them, I'm gonna cut them off to the same spot. So first, I'm gonna do the ground, which is this white one right here. And I'm just gonna strip him back enough to get, um, for automotive and trailer stuff, I really like these solderless terminals. They heat shrink and they have the glue sealant inside of them. I'll put a link of the kit that I use in the description of this video. So to cut, I'm using these Nipex side cutters. To strip, I'm using the Klein strippers. I like the blue handle ones the most. And then the crimp, I'm using these Klein uh, crimpers and I know these can do everything but I, I prefer the way the other ones strip and I don't like cutting as much with this edge so I use three you don't have to <clears throat> but I, I prefer how smooth these blue strippers are just for stripping um, they don't crimp that well you have a crimping spot but it's not nearly as quality as this one and then when you're crimping these rain tight heat shrink solderless connectors. You always want to use this one that doesn't have the dimple in it. That dimple will tear through the insulation and you can get shorts that way. So I always load the crimp into my uh, crimpers first and then sleeve it over the wire. Now I'm going to 
strip this one back. One thing you gotta look out for is, and these even say on them, not all of them do. And grab another splice. So these actually specify the size of wire that can go into them, so 22 to 16 gauge. Um, so all of these are 16 gauge. The break though is 14, so I'm gonna have to bump up to the blue. Right here, blue is for 14 to 16 gauge. So now that the white one's crimped, and I, I always do my uh, heat shrinking last, we're gonna cut this right turn, which is green, at the exact same spot that that other one is. And then we're gonna strip it back. That one's a little bit bigger. So we're going to use a blue one on that. Remember, this is the right turn, so I want to attach green to this one. And as you remember, I did not cut the ground, and I'm not going to cut this green so they stay the same length. is left turn which is yellow. Once again I'm going to cut it off to where it's the same length as the others and you can cut right in front of that crimp and still be able to strip them. I'm stripping about 3 sixteenths of an inch off of these. So this one was right, uh, left turn which is yellow. Okay, so as you can see, they're all the same length. They stay in a bundle together. Like I said, this brown, we're trimming differently. So I'm gonna cut him out here. And then I'm actually gonna trace this bundle down with this brown and mark where he needs to be cut. Like I said, we want this to stay in a nice bundle. I wouldn't be leaving this splice of all these wires together other than whoever did that did a good job. It's nice and tight. I can see they used the watertight heat shrink on it. And so there's no point in redoing something that's done well. Well, it's not wanting to start in there as easily. Rolling that back and forth kind of helped to get in there. Okay, so as you can see, those stay in a bundle. So now, I'm gonna mark out this break so that he can be in the same bundle. I don't know if you could just see right there, but I cut all but one strand and it kind of stuck together. That's why I like to use those Klein side cutters.
or Nipex side cutters. Okay, so that's the whole bundle done. Um, I need to show before and after of how these wires looked, just so you can compare the difference. But I'm gonna get a chunk of loom, wrap all this up in loom after I heat shrink these, of course, and get the loom to stub up into this, probably an inch and a half or so, and back into this one a decent amount. And then that way we don't have to worry about the rough edges of this cutting through those wires again. So I'm gonna go grab the heat gun to heat shrink that first. So if you look kind of close on these, I don't know which one's easiest to see. You can see a little bit of the adhesive that's in there coming out. So now let those cool for a minute and then we'll wrap some wire loom on it and zip tie it. Probably some people say that I should have staggered each of the splices and to you people I say I agree. But being that I have all this stuff right here I didn't want to have any splices trying to bend because typically what happens is you get a splice like this and then you can't get sharp like that and as it bounces those will break off so I want a nice loose bend here let's cut this guy off this loom over the top of that if you can Okay, so that corner's done. <clears throat> Two different sections of harness were completely melted. Now when I turn the lights on, the brakes don't lock up. When I turn the brakes on, the lights don't light up. So I think we're good to go. I replaced those lights on the sides. I didn't record that because it's all the same thing. Screw them in and hook the two wires up, so. And you'd already seen me hook wires up, so you know that how that goes. So, at any rate, I'm gonna take this thing for a test drive, cruise it down the interstate a little bit, and uh, play with the brakes a bunch and just make sure everything works. And uh, that makes it for this one. Nice, easy job, so stay tuned, like, comment, subscribe for more.